One of the most shocking developments in the whole impeachment debacle is Democrat Jeff Van Drew flipping to the Republican Party. Now, for the most part, it's only been reported that he's going to do this. I think he may have denied it, but we now have, I guess you can call it confirmation. Five of his employees have resigned and they've said he's siding with the, a president who's using the office for political gain. All this, all, all this other stuff that was never proven. And I tell you what, it is the stupidest thing the Democrats could do. I have much respect for Jeff Van Drew for doing this. I'm sad that he's doing it. And, and, and perhaps, you know, these, these employees may feel similarly. They released a statement. Let me tell you something. Okay, first, the Democrats are calling him a traitor and a rat. Did you know that Jeff Van Drew's district hasn't voted in a Democrat since 1994? Let's go through the important facts here. Here's New Jersey's second district. In 2018, Jeff Van Drew won by you know, about six or seven percentage points. But look at this. Going back 2016, 14, 12, it was Frank Lombiando the entire way, all the way back to 1992. So I was wrong. It's 92. The last time a Democrat won was in 1992. This seat has been held by a Republican up until Lombiando. I guess he didn't run again. Seth Grossman run. Jeff Van Drew won. I'll tell you what. This is, this is as some people have referred to it, South Jersey is Trump country. That's what some people have said. But let me tell you something. It's not the Trumpiest of Trump country. It is, you know, moderate. I live just outside of Jeff Van Drew's district. And I talk to my neighbors and guess what? First of all, many are actually conservative Trump supporters. Some of them are tacit liberals, meaning they don't really follow the news all that much. They just kind of vote Democrat if they vote. They're not really active. I have met no hard leftists, progressives, none. I know they exist. I'm not saying they don't, but I live here. I go to the mall. Okay. I go to the restaurants. I go, I go to the bars. I have not met one AOC type person. I have not met one person who likes her. Not that I go around and people are saying things like, oh, I can't stand her. No, nobody cares. So you have a bunch of moderate, you know, it's a very moderate place. Uh, granted, I'm in a blue district, right? I'm, I'm, I'm in like a, a district that's been blue for a long time. I'm just next to him. I'm in NJ, uh, New Jersey's first, I think. So Jeff Van Drew represents the second. The Democrats are mad that Jeff Van Drew won't support impeachment. So they're calling him a traitor and a rat, even though impeachment is guaranteed to fail. Think about that. So here's what I want to do. I want to show you the, the story about the resignation. But the, before, before we get into this and talk about, I, I have no respect for those who resigned. None. You know why? Check this out. Jeff Van Drew's for Congress, his campaign website, his issues would make many Republicans recoil in terror. Ah, I'm exaggerating, but listen, he's got, you know, the, the civil rights thing is, I mean, let's, here he says, I will strongly defend civil rights, everybody, including yada, 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 uh, regardless of race, religion, color, gender, identity, or orientation. Jeff Van Drew is in favor of policies based around gender identity. I'm a moderate, and even I am, I question that. Jeff Van Drew on that issue is a little bit to the left of me. I'm actually, uh, admittedly, in favor of identity, uh, of some gender identity uh, uh, laws, so long as they're done thoughtfully and correctly, and I think they're being implemented poorly. But that's a blanket statement. So I'm not going to speak to exactly what he's saying on that, but that is a very Democrat statement. Equal pay for women, not something a Republican would say. Immigration, comprehensive immigration reform to help people get in. Yeah, not something, you know, it, it, he's moderate. He's moderate. A lot of moderate Trump supporters might see that and say, yeah, okay, I agree. But look at this, net neutrality. He is a hardcore advocate for net neutrality. He is a Democrat and he's, he's voting to stop offshore drilling in New Jersey. The dude is clearly a Democrat. Now, here's the good news. There's always a light at the end, at, at the end of the tunnel. There, there is always, you know, when God closes a door, he opens a window. The bad news is that Jeff Van Drew leaving the Democratic Party means that they can only shoot to the left, okay? With a moderate like him in the Democrats saying no to impeachment, the Democrats are constrained, but they were going to primary him and he would be guaranteed to lose because the Democrats have gone insane. The Democrats in this district overwhelmingly support impeachment. I think it's like 60 to 70 percent. But the Democrats aren't the majority, for the most part. For the most, I would say it's fair to say t technically they won 2018, so I'll give them that. But this is a place that's voted Republican for you know more than 20 years. Now they 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 typically 
have voted for Democrats in the president, presidential election. So it's a moderate district. But he's, here's a guy who's taking a temperature check of his district and saying, look, man, where I, where I come from, they don't want this. And I'll tell you what, I don't live in his district. I'm, in all seriousness, I think I'm like a mile and a half or two miles from his district. I'm really, really close. Uh, I actually thought I was in his district because um, I think he represents actually one of the, uh, I think he actually represents half of the town I live in. It's like something ridiculous like that, right? So I'm, I'm in a bluer area. But I tell you what, man, I think he was right. Look, I live here, you know what I mean? And you know my thoughts on the whole matter. I'm like, dude, Trump's got a, a, a wave of victories, you know, this past week. It's been, it's been just absolutely epic for the president in terms of getting, getting what he wants. And I think, I, I guess, you know, these, these Democrats, you know, let, let me show you what they say and I'll, and I'll explain to you why. Here's what they said. In a letter addressed to Allison Murphy, Van Drew's chief of staff, the aides wrote that the politician's latest move does not align with the values we brought to this job when we joined the office. What values? What values have anything to do with being a Democrat? I don't care about Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Green Party. Your values are your values. Your values are not the D stamped on your chest. And that's what I see when I see this move. If Jeff Van Drew still believes in everything he campaigned on, why would you resign? Because they are, they, they, they are, they're, you know what? Jeff Van Drew is not the traitor. If Jeff Van Drew is standing up, standing up for what he's always believed in, then he has my respect. So we'll see. He wants to switch to be a Republican. That's what they're reporting. Okay. He will likely face a primary challenge from an actual Republican. He might lose. I'm not convinced a far left pro impeachment Democrat is going to win this district. It's possible because you got you to understand a lot of people will claim it's hardcore Trump country. It's not, but it does lean that direction. Okay. When I, I tell you, when I go out and meet people, I've met more conservatives out here, but they're not hardcore, you know, they're, 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 they're not the most, I don't know, uh, heels dug in Trump supporters. They're like regular people who don't pay attention too much, who want to see the job get done. And they happen to say, you know, they like Trump. That's about it. So it's, it leans that way. That's why I think he knows this. Like you have to imagine that Jeff Van Drew didn't just blindly be like, you know what? I'm just going to side with Trump on this one. No, he probably got a ton of phone calls and he probably talked to a lot of people and they probably said, listen, man, Impeachment is a waste of time. It is not what we want. We just want you to get the job done and do what you campaigned on. And he said, okay. I doubt this is a guy who, you know, decided randomly just to be like, I'm going to defect from the Democrats for no reason. No, he knows what's going on in his district. He knows that for 20, 25 or 26 years, they, they elected a Republican every step of the way. And then he finally gets in and the Democrats are willing to give that seat up for a symbolic victory. We got everyone to support impeachment. And because you didn't, we will primary you. And that's the problem with the system. Primarying works. You have to fall in line with whatever the party wants. Otherwise, they will primary you and you can't run. So what, what are his options? Switch to Republican. But, you, but I tell you this, he won last time. They are, I'll, I'll tell you what, I think he can win. Because listen, I'm not, I'm not super familiar. I've only, I've only been down here about a year and a half. I'm not super familiar with... Um, what do we have here? So, so this is Frank Lobiondo. I'm not super familiar with Frank Lobiondo's positions. I could pull it up. I'm, you know, whatever. But he's a Republican, right? Here's the thing. Jeff Van Drew didn't win because he was a Democrat. Maybe, maybe he did. Maybe because you got a bunch of Democrats who said, I'm just going to come out and vote Democrat. But I tell you this, Seth Grossman got 110,000 votes. David Cole got 110,000 votes. Seth Grossman was the Republican in 2018. And David Cole was the Democrat in 2016. Frank Lobiondo got 176,000 votes in 2016. You know what that means? Trump bump. Well, in 2012, he also got 166,000. But here's the, here's the important takeaway. Jeff Van Drew is not going to win if he votes to impeach the president. You know why? Regardless of right or wrong, regardless of a primary or not, in 2020, Trump supporters will be out in droves. Here's what happened in 2018. And this was a New York Times article. This is, this is amazing stuff. They, they found that Trump supporters did not vote in the midterms for the most part. Shocking, isn't it? Trump supporters like Trump, they don't care about anything else. Now, and that's a blanket statement. I mean, obviously, the majority of Trump supporters are focused on a lot of issues, but many of them went out for Trump. And when they did, they checked R across the board. 
Come 2018, Trump wasn't on the ballot. They didn't come out. They didn't care. Most people don't, it seems. And so, so you can see when Frank Lobiondo gets his biggest uh, turnout, it is presidential election years. And that makes sense. I think that's true for everybody. So we can see that based on 2014, look, at that's a big bump for Democrats, a seriously big bump for Democrats. So I tell you this, here's a warning, serious warning for Republicans. In 2018, an, uh, a, a non-president, a midterm election, Seth Grossman, the Republican, got 110,000. In 2014, non-presidential election, Frank Lobiondo got 104,000. But the Democrat was consistently getting 50, 60, all the way going, going back all the way. Now, presidential election years, they saw a bigger bump. But check this out. Jeff Van Drew, 125K in a, in, a, in, a, in a midterm election. That should be worrying to every single Republican, okay? Now, I think Jeff Van Drew knows he won't win in 2020 because, because of Trump voters coming on full force. But this is the biggest weakness that Trump and his base has. They've upended the party. They have gotten rid of a lot of the establishment cronies, many retirements, but they don't come out for midterms. So first I'll point this out. Going back to 1992, that was the last time a Democrat won. Frank Lobiondo uh, ran and he got 98,000 vo uh, votes. But next year, Louis N. Magazu, and I'm, I'm sorry, the, two years later, the next election, Magazu only got 56,000 and Lobiondo won with 102,000. Every year there was an election. There was a big bump for both sides. And the fact is, people don't vote in these elections, right? So I'm going to make sure it's very, very clear to you. In 2014, Frank Lobiondo won with 104,000 votes. In 2018, Seth Grossman got 6,000 more votes than Lobiondo did in the last off-cycle election, and he lost to Jeff Van Drew. I think, and, I, and, I, and I'll say this too, a lot of people are looking at the UK and they're saying Boris Johnson's victory spells, you know, danger for, uh, the, Demo for the Democrats. If they go too far left, this is what's going to happen. But I'll tell you this, it's also entirely possible it's inverted. Seriously. Jeremy Corbyn in the UK was deeply unpopular. People really hate the guy. And a lot of people in this country do not like Trump. Whether you, whether you want to take the polls, I look at the aggregates, his approval ratings at like 46, 45, better than it's ever been. It's between like 43 and 46. Rasmussen has some higher. I think Quinnipiac had him a little bit higher. But there are a lot of people who are going to come out and vote simply for the sake of pushing back against Trump. There, we are going to see record turnout, I believe. And according to Moody's, if we see maximum voter turnout, Trump loses by only a few electoral votes. But I will stop now and say this. Lobiondo in 2016 got 176,000 votes. You know why? Trump supporters. If in 2020, those same Trump supporters come out and Jeff Van Drew is running as a Republican and he gets 176,000 and the other Democrat gets 125, Van Drew wins. He wins re-election as a Republican. That's the game. That's the play. I'm not saying Jeff Van Drew is doing it because of, you know, he wants to win and, you know, keep his career going. I look at his, his policy positions as a moderate dude, and I have a lot of respect for, his, for the things he, he, he stands for. Not that I agree with a lot of it, but that he's trying to be a sane, balanced individual, you know, to say like, listen, you know, we can fall somewhere in the middle and make compromise and not be extremists on either side. I have tremendous respect for that. I'm going to be really, it's going to, you know what, man? 2020 is going to be a roller coaster. It is going to be sheer insanity. But looking at the numbers of 2018 versus uh, 2016, it's hard to know exactly what's going to happen, okay? You are going to see a massive turnout of people voting against Trump. That's it. It's become a cultural phenomenon. You got to vote against Trump. That's it. A lot of people who don't care to vote all of a sudden now want to vote just because they hate Trump. Will that number go up? I don't know. Because again, Jeff Van Drew got Two, two, uh, two to two and a half times more votes than Bill Hughes Jr. did in 2014 in a previous off-cycle election. So it's hard to know exactly what will happen. 2018, that may have been the resistance, and it may not get any bigger than that. This might be it. 2018 may have been all of those people who hated Trump coming out to say, we are voting Democrat because Trump is bad, and that's all they could muster. Enough to defeat a Republican in an off-cycle election off, you know, off of the presidential cycle. But I don't know if that'll work come 2020 when you look at the numbers. Because even in 2016, David Cole got 110K uh, 
and Lobiondo got 176K. I think if Jeff Van Drew runs as a Republican, and I think he will, you know what's going to happen? A lot of people are saying the Republicans will primary Jeff Van Drew. Or, well, first of all, if he stays as a Democrat and he refuses to support impeachment, they're, they're, they're going to set him on fire. They're, they're going to they're kick him out. They're, they're, you know what? They're burning it all down. Stupid move. Jeff Van Drew won. He's defended, uh, uh, he, he's, he's resisted impeachment. And that's going to give him a lot of favors with moderates who might vote Republican, who might like Trump. Because you'll find a lot of these middle of the road people voted for Obama in the same district. But now that Jeff Van Drew is switching to the Republicans, I think the, the smart play for the Republicans is not to primary him, to make a point, to say, we are going to stand by you for defending us. So I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. Uh, on this channel. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens in 2020.